the male choir hand. Sunday at 9 o'clock. Let's talk about Deacon Robert Moore. Robert Moore, raise your hand. Amen. Let's get Deacon Moore here teaching that class. And make sure to get in that class. And also, uh, we want you to continue to keep in prayer our president. As um, this week they had the Democratic National Convention. And uh, some very great messages were lifted this week. And uh, we, we certainly want to keep him in prayer because uh, he was appointed by God to do on what he's doing. Yeah. Some of us would have gave up the first week. We got, we got folk that come to church today because somebody talked about it. And our president shows up for work every day. In spite of being judged because of the color of his skin. Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30. Uh, the back uh, 19 through 21. I know his best. Now look at the first other side and shake their hand and say, God knows best. God knows best. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God is a generous giver. The songwriter said, Amazing grace shall be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. How do you know God is a generous giver? Amen. He, he gives to us in spite of our sinful nature. He gives to us in spite of our selfishness and our often negative attitude. God is generous. It is often difficult to comprehend why God gives so generously to often sinful and lazy people. Generous is defined as gracious, unselfish, and ample. If God is generous to the church, then the church should strive to follow God's example with an attitude of generosity. I'm grateful for the simple things that I have received from God because each time I step outside of my doorstep and I drive my daughter to school in the mornings, I often see a little man in a wheelchair with no legs and a little small man and he's just struggling to make his way up the highway. And I'm wondering to myself, uh, first of all, why is this man out here struggling all by himself with no one to be around him? But secondly, um, I woke up this morning with my right mind and, and two good legs to walk on. And for that, I say thank you. I don't have a billion dollars in the bank yet. Let me hear you say yet. Uh, but but I, I thank God for what he has given me that I do have in the bank. And just the little things in life that I learned to thank God for because just when you think you got it back, God, God will humble you and show you that somebody that's got it a little bit worse. Many of us, we are not in the place where we think we should be because we have an ungrateful attitude. 
And God wants the church to reflect an attitude of generosity for everything that he has given to us. We often forfeit an abundance of blessings because of the often selfish and negative attitudes that we display. If we prove ourselves trustworthy over the simple things, God promises to give us abundance. He said in the word, he said, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. That's difficult for us to understand because we often compare ourselves to what other people have. But God does not want us to measure ourselves up to the material possessions and the standards of other people. Because when he's good to you, he has it for you, for you to be a blessing unto somebody else. Many of us don't understand the reason why God gives us a blessing. Because the cup that he gives us is really not big enough just, just for us. The cup he gives us is supposed to have some overflow so that those around you will be able to get some of the anointing that God pours out on you. But most of us uh, don't stay up under the fountain long enough for him to fill our cup. We dip in on Sunday and we dip out on Sunday because we fail to receive the, the fresh manner that God has for us. But look at your neighbor and say, if you hang around long enough, you're going to get more than enough. And that's why we got to be just like an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Understanding that God has an abundant supply, an uh, abundance of overflow that he wants to give us uh, so that not only we will be blessed, but that those around us will be blessed. And if we prove ourselves trustworthy over the simple blessings, uh, God promises to give us an abundance. Matthew chapter 25 provides several lessons about the return of Jesus Christ. When Christ returns, it will be a time of separation. God's going to separate the, the wise from the foolish. I mean, he's going to separate the faithful from the unfaithful. And God's going to separate the blessed from the cursed. I mean, look at your neighbor and say, which one are you? His coming also means a time of evaluation. As we wait for his return, we must invest our lives and earn dividends for God's glory. The word invest is defined as to buy in anticipation for future profit and to charge with authority. So if we think of faith in terms of an investment, faith has a relationship of sowing and reaping. Because if I understand that God is good, because he not only did he save me, but he woke me up this morning. The fact that he woke me up this morning lifts the standard that he expects me to make an investment. So we can start each day by giving God the praise. That's why we pray every Friday because we want to start our day with God. We want to thank God for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Everybody that went to sleep on last night did not wake up this morning. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. When is the last time you really thank God just for waking you up and let you see another day. Look to say, make an investment. The second thing we need to understand is that dividends are defined as a bonus offered often to share of profits divided among stockholders. A dividend is also an unexpected benefit. So when I praise God, when praises go up, blessings will come down. But when also when I learn to worship God, that's a higher level than praise. Because when you get in worship, that's when the dividends really kick in. That's when people you ain't never met before will shake your hand and they'll leave some money in your hand. That's when you come home and you open the mailbox and a check will be in the mail for somebody that you don't even know and something you wasn't even expected. Some of us are making investments where we hadn't worshiped God long enough to get paid our dividends. But let me tell you that God pays dividends. In order to receive a future profit, for our service to the Lord, we must take the risk and exercise faithfulness. If you don't put nothing in, you ain't going to get nothing out. If you put in with a negative attitude, you're going to reap with a negative attitude. We cannot get lost in the blessings that God has given to others. We wonder why they got a nice house, why they got a nice car, why they got a new husband, why they got a new wife, why are we worried about what the Joneses have when we need to understand if God's going to bless them, if I trust in him and be faithful to him, what God has for me 
it is for me. We cannot get lost in the blessings that God has given to others, but we must be good stewards over what God has given to us. Uh, you may not have the house out of the hill, but, but you need to take care of the house that he did give you. Uh, you may not have four and five cars, uh, but you need to wash that dirty car you got right now. Uh, you may not have all the clothes uh, and the shoes that you want to have, uh, but learn to do like how my daddy taught me when I was a little boy. Learn how to shine those shoes that you do have, uh, because God has been good. Don't your neighbor say God knows best. So the problem that we have in the church, we think that God don't know who to bless. We think that God uh, is worried about all night long uh, what he's going to do on the next day in terms uh, of passing out blessings. Uh, but I want to let you know today uh, that God ain't going to never run out of blessings. Uh, he's never going to run out uh, of who to bless and how much to bless them with. Uh, when he gives to us, uh, it's for an intended purpose uh, and for an intended sign. Uh, because Paul said, in due season we shall reap uh, if we think not. The question today that we raise from the text is, how do we show faithfulness for God's blessings? Every last one of us are blessed, but the measure that we're blessed is upon the faithfulness of God and our faithfulness to God. God is faithful to us. Somebody ought to say amen. But he's also looking for us to be faithful unto him. Look at the text today. It teaches us three things in order to understand how to show faithfulness for God's blessings. The first thing that we need to understand is we need to answer God's call. In chapter number 25, Jesus tells several parables that's preparing the church for the return of Jesus the Christ. The first parable he tells in chapter 25 is the parable of the ten virgins, where there are five wise virgins and there are five foolish virgins. And he is emphasizing in this parable the importance of preparation in order to receive him at the time of his return. Uh, look at your neighbor and say you got to be prepared. Uh, and in the second parable, he's telling the parable of the talents. Uh, and thank God your pastor went to seminary uh, because talents does not mean the ability to sing uh, or play the piano or dance. Uh, talents was a unit of money. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was 20 years wages. Uh, and in today's money, it would be $600,000. Uh, so if you do the math, if you multiply 600000 uh, times 5 times 2 and times one, you would have a whole lot of money, about $4.8 million. So this master counted $4.8 million as a small sum of money, and he gave the first man $3 million. The second man, he gave him $1.2 million, and the third man, he gave him $600,000. In order to show you what kind of attitudes and abilities that these men had, you got to watch the story and how they handled the master's money. In verse number 14, it tells us, For it is like a man going on a journey. He called his own servants, and he turned over his possessions unto them. The first thing that we need to do is need to answer God's call. I like the songwriter that said, When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Some of you have been praying for a mighty long time. And when you have been praying, you are looking for God to answer your situation. You ought to be glad to be a servant of God. Glad enough to when he calls you, you will come running when he calls your name. The text, when it says the word called, it comes from the Greek word kaleo. Which means to call aloud. It means to call by name. It means to invite. This master had many servants, but he was specific in when he was calling out these three servants to the extent that he called each servant by name. When God's got a blessing for Tony, he's going to call Tony. When he's got a blessing for Wayne, he's going to call Wayne. When he's got a blessing for Sandra, he's going to call Sandra. Look at your neighbor and say, God knows your name. 
God wants to bless one of us. He knows specifically who he wants to bless and why he wants to bless and the purpose of the blessing. So ain't no need of us getting discouraged and frustrated and why he's blessing us the way that he's blessing us. I'm so glad that this master was trying to teach his service a lesson. He called Tony, he called Wayne, and he called Sandra all at the same time. And each gave each one of them a different amount of talent. I went back and read this again. It messed me up. Some of us who ain't grown up here, we wonder why God don't give us all the same thing. We just like the kindergartners at snack time. We want the same amount of Kool-Aid and the same color and the same color Doritos. And when somebody gets a different kind of Doritos than we get, we'll say, hey man, bigger than mine. Look, somebody say, answer the call. Sometimes some of us like to break in line. Come running up to the table to get our blessing that we think for us when he ain't called our name yet. Look at them and say, it ain't your turn yet. He called his own slaves and turned over to his, his possessions. And to one he gave five, to another one two, and to another one one, each according to his own ability. Then he went on a journey. Immediately the man who had received five talents went and put them to work and had earned five more. In the same way the man who had earned two had earned two more. The first man started out with three million and he had doubled that blessing and now he has six million dollars. The second man started out with 1.2 million and now he has 2.4 million dollars. But the man who had received six hundred thousand dollars went off, dug a hole in the ground, and put $600,000 in his backyard on Spartanburg Street. After a long time, the master of the servants came and settled the accounts. My brothers and sisters, not only should we answer God's call, the second lesson is we need to appreciate God's charity. My brothers and sisters, he may not have given me three million. He may not have given me 1.2 million. But if he gives me 600,000, I can guarantee you, I ain't going to put it in the backyard on Patty Drive. I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to give my man 60,000 right off the top. And secondly, I'm going to make sure that all my wife's and our debt is paid off. Then I'm going to invest in helping some people who don't have food and clothing and shelter. I ain't going to swear about what I'm going to spend it all in Atlanta on September 15th. Yeah. Yeah. First thing some of us will do, we give 600000 we go going to the rental rooms. <laughs> going to the motor mine. And spending it all up on things that don't really matter. What I like about this master is he didn't have to give none of them nothing. But the one he gave $600,000, it proves to us why he gave him $600,000. Because he had the wrong attitude. He didn't know what to do with it. And in Bible days, it must be understood that keeping money in the ground was considered to be safe. Just like the Mother Queen and Grandmama and Great Grandmama's day when the banks uh, were considered not to be safe because in 1929 we had a stock market crash. So Grandmama and Great Grandmama used to put money in socks uh, inside of jars and inside of jars, inside of mattresses. Or sometimes uh, Big Mama would put the money in the ground because uh, it was believed at the time that banks uh, would steal your money. So before we're too hard on the third servant, what he was doing was actually playing it safe. But the problem was is that he didn't understand how to appreciate the generosity of the master. The Greek word traded and what the first servant did comes from the word ergazomai, which means to talk. It means to commit. It means to labor. That's why our ancestors had the song that said, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. I keep so busy praising my Jesus. I ain't got time to die. My brothers and sisters, when God has blessed you, 
You have to spend all of your time looking to be a blessing back to God. That's why we sang the song today, Bless That Wonderful Name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's power in the name. There's healing in the name. No other name I know. I feel a celebration. I'm going to show my appreciation. Because God didn't have to give me another thing. If he never does anything else, he's already done enough. I'm so glad to let you know today that I answered the call. When he's called me, I've answered. I appreciate his charity. God has been good to me. And so because he's been good to me, I'm going to pay my tithes and my offerings. But the third and last thing I want to tell you, not only need to answer God's call, not only need to appreciate God's charity, not, but you also need to accept God's charge. Look at how the master carries out the blessings of the three servants. He came to settle his accounts to them. And the man that he gave three billion, he came to him and said, Lord, I took the three billion he gave me. And I took it and made six million. And he said to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. And now I'm going to put you in charge of many things. That word, put you in charge, comes from the Greek word, which means to make, it means to appoint. And I'm so glad today that I'm anointed and appointed, not because of where I want to be, but because where he wants me to be. Where he leads me, I'm going to follow, I'm going to go with him all the way. You would have thought that this master had ran out of blessings, but he had another servant who had had 1.2 million. He took it and made 2.4 million. And he says the same thing to him. He said, you have been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's joy. The man had not run out of blessings. He started out with 4.8 million and now he has 9.6 million. This master got a lot to go around. But the third man, he approached him and said, you are a difficult man. You have reaped what you have not sown and you have gathered what you have not scattered. I was afraid so I went off and I took $600,000 and I put it in the ground. He took the dirty money. That's how some of us are. We still got some dirty money. He took the dirty money. He said, take it back. Here it is yours. He was ungrateful. But his master replied to him, you evil and lazy slave. If you knew that I reap where I have not sown and I gathered where I have not scattered, then you should have deposited my money in the bank. Look at somebody say, don't spend all your money. You got to put some in the bank. And when I return, I would have received my money with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten. For everyone who has, more will be given and he will have more than enough. Don't you worry about God. He knows just who to bless. When you squander what he has given you, if you try to don't use what he has given you, he's got enough blessings to take from you and give to somebody else. If you don't want people to serve in the church, if you want to be mean and negative and run for cough, God's going to take that gift and send it over to redemption and send it over to New Springs and send it over to Shady Oak and send it over to Bethlehem. He's going to send it somewhere where it's appreciated. Some of us don't want to give God the praise. But when he sends somebody else, 
We get mad when they try to praise God. That's a gift. That's enough gift for praises to go up and blessings to come back down. And all I'm trying to tell you is, is that God is trying to tell us to be faithful over a few things. If we're faithful over a few things, he said he'll make us ruler over many. The master traveled to a far country and the surprise that there will be enough time to test the faithfulness of all of the servants. I'm so glad I'm here because I made some mistakes. I have been right all the time. But look at the neighbors that he's given me time. He's given me time to be faithful because he's coming back around again. This proverb illustrates that a person must use what God has given. Because if you don't use it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose it. This includes your abilities. This includes your spiritual gifts. But this also includes your possessions. The unfaithful servant is the one who fails to be faithful over what God has already given. The unfaithful servant will not share in the rewards. I like Paul Jones when he said it this way. He said, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days, and I've had some lonely nights. He said, but when I look around, and I think things over, he says, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. And you know what? I won't complain. If he gave me what he's given me, I won't be ashamed to wave my hands. If he's blessed me with what he's blessed me with, I'm not going to worry about what he gave Wayne or Sandra. What God has for me, it is for me. Somebody here is still sitting there and saying, Reverend, you just don't understand. I got bills on death on top of bills. I got more months than I do money. But you just heard a testimony today that says if you learn how to be faithful, God knows your address. He knows your phone number. He knows all about you. The reason why, because he made you in his image and in his likeness. And what I'm trying to tell you, he knows what's best for you. Ain't no need to complain. You just be faithful over a few things. And he'll put you in charge over many things. When I started preaching, he didn't make me a pastor in April. I started preaching in April of 2000. Then, after I graduated in 2003, he still didn't give me a church. But I kept on preaching. He made me an assistant pastor for five years at Reading River. I have been preaching for almost nine years before I ever became a pastor. When he gave me a church, he didn't give me 5,000 members, but he did give me a faithful few members. And I'm going to keep on preaching until he grows what he has given me. Look at the neighbor say, be faithful over a few, and he'll make you ruler over many. God is good all the time. He started out with 12 disciples, but the 12 taught 70. The 70 taught 120. The 120 taught 500. The 500 taught 3,000. And now the 3,000 has become 1 million. All I'm trying to tell you is you got to be faithful over a few. If you're grateful for all the things that God has given you, will you stand on your feet and wave your hands?